As I was driving the other day, I pulled up behind a truck that had a sticker attached to the window. The sticker said, God bless America. And as I continued driving down the road, I noticed a huge billboard reaching high into the sky. The billboard said, in God we trust. Well, I'm going to get back to you in a few minutes on that one. But first, I want to tell you about something I remember. I remember the time the trash needed to be taken out. But I was in bed sleeping when my mother asked me. Well, she actually told me. She actually told me to get my butt up and to take that trash out. Because she had told me to take it out the night before. But I forgot. Or simply didn't prioritize her request. I remember groaning and mumbling in rejection. I took my time getting up, fussing and talking back because I didn't want to leave my bed of comfort. My mother was upset at my slowness and my rudeness. After the encounter, I remember my butt cleaning the bottom of a house shoe. Well, a little time later, my mother informed me of a visiting carnival that had just arrived in town. I needed permission and money to join in the fun with my friends, so I asked my mother for permission and for some cash. She reminded me of my rudeness from earlier and dismissed my request without a second thought, but she did include that I told you so dreaded sinister laugh. I pouted and began sulking. Have you ever asked for something that you didn't deserve? My request to go hit a big dry wall that day. She refused to grant permission. She refused to provide cash. She didn't even get upset as she continued with that determined laugh. No matter how much I pleaded, my words fell on deaf ears. It wasn't until I realized and I apologized that I sort of got the response that I was looking for. You see, I had to apologize for my past history of rudeness and ask for forgiveness and promise to never make that mistake again. Well. After I apologized to her, and after I convinced her that I understood, and after I asked for forgiveness with the proper context, things began to get better. Have you ever asked for something that you didn't deserve because of your actions? I'm sure you have. Stay with me now. I'm getting to my point, but I do want to tell you that I was able to get to the carnival and enjoy the cotton candy. A few days later, the house of mirrors and the bumper car and the fast-moving ride called the Zipper. Not only because I apologize, but because I understood the context. Is there anyone out there that struggles with the context at times? Like the little boy on the Andy Griffin show, screaming, I want my bike, after the bike was taken away because he refused to quit riding it on the sidewalk, endangering others even in the face of his father going to jail. Ooh-wee. Stay focused, coach. Well, anyway, back to my message. Because I apologize, I asked for forgiveness and convinced my mother of the lesson that I learned. I was able to enjoy the carnival. Let's take a moment to reflect on something that I saw the other day. I began this message reflecting on the sticker, God Bless America and the billboard that read, In God We Trust. Have you ever asked for something that you didn't deserve? Can it be that America is asking for something that it does not deserve? Like that little rude boy, could it be because of America's slowness, rudeness, and hatefulness? America is asking for something that it does not deserve. Like that little boy refusing to take out the trash on time, or the little boy riding the bike on the sidewalk. Can it be that America is pleading without acknowledgement or negligent of wrongdoings? Are we prioritizing the needs of the most vulnerable? Are we listening and understanding the context? The context of those in need. The devil, which is evil, is in partnership to attack. Marriages and families are under attack by mistrust, distrust, and social media dust. The poor is under attack by the wealthy and the privileged, not interested in protecting our village. 
the American way of praying, asking, and begging for a blessing while remaining entrenched behind constitutional rights of hate, bigotry, protectionism, rejectionism. We are praying for the right to carry weapons of mass destruction that will ensure destruction. We demand voter registration and not gun registration. Come on now. Well, sometimes you will get what you deserve. We now listen to talking points instead of understanding points. The sticker was asking for God to bless America. Why? Why should America be blessed? Well, anyway, I want to tell you there are several ways to resolve conflicts within your family and within America. One, talk directly. Assuming that there's no threat of physical violence, talk directly to the person with whom you have a problem. Direct conversation is the most effective conversation. Direct conversation is much more effective than sending letters, banging on walls, or throwing rocks, or complaining to everyone. Two, choose a good time to talk. Plan ahead and allow yourself enough time for a thorough discussion. Don't start talking about conflict just as the other person is leaving to make dinner, for an example. Try to talk in a quiet place where you both can be comfortable and undisturbed for as long as the discussion takes. Three, plan ahead. Think about what you want to say ahead of time. Explain what the problem is and how it affects you. Four, don't blame or name call. Antagonizing the other person only makes it harder for him or her to, to hear you or to understand your concerns. Don't blame the other person for everything or begin the conversation with your opinion or what should be done. Five, give information. Don't interpret the other person's behavior. For an example, you blocking my driveway on purpose just makes me mad. Instead, give information about your own feelings. When your car blocks my driveway, I get angry because I can't get to work on time. Or the policies that you're presenting disrupts the American dream for my children and their grandchildren. And six, listen. Give the other person a chance to tell his or her side of the conflict completely. Relax and listen. Try to learn how the other person feels. Although you may not agree with what is being said, Tell the other person that you hear him or her and are glad that you're discussing the problem together. Remember, America is under attack. We're not under attack from those seeking the American dream crossing at the border. We're under attack from power, greed, and political hoarders. Marriages are under attack. Families are under attack. Relationships and friendships are under attack. But with better communication and respect, we can solve the problems of America our families, our relationships, our friendships, we can get it done. And finally, number seven, talk it all through. Once you start, get all the issues and the feelings out into the open. Don't leave out the part that seems too difficult to discuss because you've lost your desire to trust. Your solutions will work best if all issues are discussed thoroughly. When you've reached this point in the discussion, start working on a solution two or more people cooperating are much more effective than one person telling another to change. Be specific. Follow through. Agree to check with each other on specific times and to make sure that the agreement is still working. Then, really do it. Question. How does God tell us to handle conflict? God's Word tells us that He usually expects several things from us in regards to conflict resolution. He expects humility forgiveness, love, and action. What are the seven steps of resolving conflict according to the Bible? One, surrender to Jesus. Two, humble yourself. And three, go towards conflict, not away. Four, be quick to listen. And five, take responsibility for your part and apologize. Six, speak the truth and love. Ephesians 4-15. Seven, forgive freely, and make restitution. It's the American citizens that deserve blessings of change, not the American profiteers. Faith is not getting something from God, but faith gets us closer to God. And God we trust was scribbled on the billboard. I have a question for you. Are we trusting God to grant us or give us something that we don't deserve? I hope not. If so, the good old days of going to the carnival, 
to enjoy the cotton candy, the bumper cars, and the other rides will soon be gone. Although the House of Mirrors will remain in place forever. Again, faith is not getting something from God. Faith is getting us closer to God. Amen and hallelujah. Overcome. Words for you. By Bruce Etheridge.